On today's show, we're going to take a look at a really fun summer bag. Welcome back, my guest today. This is Joan Hawley. Hi, Joan. How are you? Hi, Kay. I'm fine. How are you? Uh, just fine. This looks like fun. This is a fun bag to make and to use. And one of the things that's so exciting about this is the walls of the bag are big fused appliques. Really? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. We're going to take two quilter's weight cottons and fuse them just like you would an applique to make canvas. Isn't so that it fun? Give it does feel like that. Yeah, so let's take a look at the features of this bag okay. and see what we're going to be making today. So our summer tote bag here is a zip top tote with two handles. We've got pockets around the front, very mm -hmm. easy to make. And when you turn it around, we see that the pockets in the back hold everything from a cell phone, which I can't grab, here we go, <laughs> to a file folder and pens. So again, we have an easy zip top with some grab tabs, and let's get started and see how we make this canvas. Okay, it looks like fun. It looks like the whole office is in there. You can work right out of the bag. All right, and it's outside the bag, too. I like that. Even easier, <laughs> yep. that's right. Okay, so to get started, we need to make the cover of the bag. Now, when I said like an applique, we're gonna work with fusible web. Okay. And we just need something that's not lightweight. And let me peel this apart and show you just what it is we're working with. Now here we have a medium weight fusible okay. sandwiched between two pieces of paper just to keep it protected before use. Okay. So let's go ahead and peel that off. Let's just just one side. One side okay. to start. Now let's set that aside. Okay. And here we've already cut the lining of our bag, it's just a big rectangle, nothing fancy. Go ahead and press that, and then we're ready to add our fusible web. So follow Sticky side down? Sticky side down. And what we've done is we have cut this a little bit smaller than our fabric, which means we can press it without an applique pressing sheet and not worry about getting any on our iron. Oh, that's good, because that gunk doesn't like to be on the iron, <laughs> does it? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Now whatever fusible web you use, just make sure you follow the manufacturer's directions. Like for this product, it said to go ahead and wash my fabric, which takes away any of the sizing or okay. protectants before you use it. There we go. And then, after we peel that away, all right, it might have shifted a little bit, so just smooth it back into place. Make sure it's not sticking off so that it's not going to get ironed onto your ironing board or onto your iron. Then for the cover piece, we're simply going to fold it in half and hold it so we can manage it. Oh, okay. This is pretty big to work with. To get all those li layers lined up, just simply move the first edge into place and then lift the rest. And like putting looks... wallpaper on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so from here, we would take this over to our pressing area, press the whole thing, fuse it well, and then we're going to recut it a little bit so that the fusible goes all the way to the edge of the piece that we need. I wondered how you were going to handle those edges. So let's take a look at what we've done. Here's our fusible and our fabrics already pressed. And can you feel that? Boy, it does feel like canvas. I like the feel of that for a bag. And what we've done is we've marked some of the corners that we need to cut away, which is going to give us the structure and the shape of the bag. And since we're going to cut it away, I just went ahead and marked it okay. with a pen, and I recommend using scissors to do this cut rather than a rotary cutter because you don't want to overcut. You oh, really just okay. want to cut right up to the corner. Now you know us, we like to use everything from our project, so we're going to set this aside because we're going to need it later. Oh, <laughs> I figured you would. And it's just too good to waste. Mm -hmm. So here we go, our lining and our cover fabric. And next up, we're going to put together some pockets for the inside of our bag. Okay. And you know us, we do easy pockets. <laughs> so very simply, we're going to take a piece of fabric, fold it and press it, stitch along our edges, 
and over, and we're going to leave a little opening to turn it right sides out. Okay. And when we, we do, we get this, and it's very easy to turn. Just reach in. Now we have a trick. We're going to pinch with our fingers. The corners? The corners. Neat. And hold. And when we turn, our there corner is are. all the way poked out. So we're going to do that for all of our pockets on the inside. How many are there? There are two. You can always add more if you like. But remember, when we sew this in place, since this is just one piece of fabric now, it's going to show on the front. The stitching. It okay. Will. So our outside pocket is going to cover that. Okay, we would press that flat and we are ready to go. So next up we have our lining piece with our pocket already sewn in place. Okay, that's the pocket we just turned. Right? That's the pocket we turned. We top stitched it and then we simply stitched it in place around the edges and then we stitched it once up the center to give it a little separation. Okay. And if you'll hand me the long ruler, I will show you how we found that perfect pocket placement. Now our whole project is going to be made or constructed using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. And since this is our finished cover, we need to keep everything at least a quarter of an inch in. So to find the perfect placement for our inside pocket, we're just going to line a ruler up along the cut edge of our notches and make sure that this is at least a quarter of an inch out of that future seam allowance. Okay, so next, let's take a look at how to make that outside pocket. All right. And we're doing one half of the bag at a time. We're going to do two of these. So you can mix it up and use different fabrics and use different size pockets. Now for the outside front of the bag, we're just going to take a long piece of fabric, okay. fold it in half, and just stitch the long edge. And that makes a tube. Couldn't be easier. <laughs> So here we are with our stitched tube. Okay. And I have a little tip for pressing this. Oh. You know when you turn this right sides out, that seam is going to want to buckle into the project. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. So before we turn it, let's just center that seam and by hand, go ahead and give it a little press. You can do this by machine if you like. And doing so, when we turn it, and it's so big we don't need a tube turner, you can just load this up on your arm, turn it right sides out. And look, our seam doesn't want to buckle nearly as much. Well, that's a good hint. Mm -hmm. That's right. So when we press this, we're just going to roll the seam with our fingers toward one edge. Now here's another little tip. We don't really want that right on the edge. We want it just off the edge. And that side's going to be against the bag. OK. I see where you're going with that. So All when right. we turn it over, it'll look. We will have a nice. Yep crisp edge. Here it is. We've turned it and you can see it's just off center. Uh huh. Just a little bit. So this is the inside of our pocket. So you don't see that seam at all on the outside. We get a nice clean edge at that fold. Good idea. Let's look at the pocket placement for this. So let's move some of this out of the way. And here what we've done, we're moving to the back of the bag and we have a pocket in, in a different fabric. We're going to do the same thing we did before, using our ruler and place it just on the edge of our notches mm -hmm. to make sure that this is out of the seam allowance down here where we're going to sew the bag together later. Good idea. That's an easy tip too. Now remember, we have that bottom with the seam. Mm -hmm. We're going to line that right up by the ruler. Mm -hmm. We've gone ahead and top stitched our edge just for a little stability and a little decoration. Okay. And we made our pocket longer, or wider I should say them in the cover of the bag. Oh, I see. Okay, it's, it extends over the edges. It does. So when we stitch this in place, we'll stitch right along that seam. Okay. Let's move that out of the way. And here's what we have. We have a cover with an outside pocket. We've stitched some separations. And when we turn this over, we can take our small ruler and a rotary cutter at this point and we have guaranteed that our pocket is going to come all the way to the edge by cutting it a little bit bigger to start with. I see. All right. So you are going to trim it down. We're going to trim it down just to the edge of the mm -hmm. bag. That way, if you're working from a fat quarter or you have a little extra fabric, make your pockets for the outside just a little bit longer. And when you turn them and press them and top stitch them and then put them in place, 
you'll be able to trim them so that they are perfect with the side of your bag. Good idea. That will give you extra stability at the seam allowance mm -hmm. when you put the bag together later in the project. Now at this point, this is the back of our bag. Now remember, this is large enough for a file folder. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is we've just stitched some pocket separations through the whole thing. And we know that we didn't stitch through the inside pocket. Oh, that's why the inside pocket's shorter. That's See, right. I'm catching on here. It's shorter <laughs> and narrower, so its stitching okay. is much shallower than this stitching. And this is covered, the stitching, when you put the small pocket on the inside. That's right. And then if you want, this is going to end up on the side of the bag. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and slide your cell phone in there and see how deep you need to make that pocket ah. and do a test fit. So don't work off of our measurements. Determine what you need for yourself. Because this is a pretty small cell phone, smaller than is. mine. It, that's right. They're in different sizes, uh -huh. so mark it to measure whatever you need. And then over here we have another pocket that's loose. This will be stitched down into the side seam, and we can separate this for pens and pencils. But it's pretty deep, so make sure you stitch across and make it shallower. That's a good idea. I can just see trying to reach my <laughs> cell phone way down in there. My hand wouldn't fit. No. <laughs> so next, we need some handles. Let's take a look at how to make handles. Now this couldn't be easier. What we're going to do is we're just simply going to take a strip of fabric, mm -hmm and fold it twice so that it resembles double fold bias tape. Okay. And when we fold all the layers back together and press it real well, we're going to simply stitch along the edges so that our stitching matches. Okay, now this was not fused together with anything. It's just a single layer. That's right. Okay. Right now we have so many layers of fabric that if we add it fusible in there, some machines might be difficult mm -hmm. uh, to use to sew through this. So here we've stitched our edges. And that holds all of our layers together. And now remember on our sample bag, the center of the handle was smaller. And what we did was we quite simply folded it in half one more oh, that's time. That's a good idea. And stitched it, which creates a nice decorative handle. Very simple to do. Mm -hmm. Let's look at how we place the handle on our project. Okay. Let's turn this around. And once again, we're gonna use that nice ruler trick. We're just gonna measure down a couple of inches pardon me, from the top of the bag. Mm -hmm. And we want our handles to be even so that when they're sewn in place and the bag is complete, the bag is suspended at the same distance from the handles. <laughs> sort of helps keep it even, doesn't it? That's right. There's nothing <laughs> like ending up with two different lengths because they didn't go on at the same point in the bag. So very simply, you'll measure over from the sides to find your handle placement. Use the markings on the ruler to put them in place. And then we'll take a couple of pins. Did we move our pins? Yeah, here, here we go. Are. This is great. All you simply need to do is pin it in place. And we're just going to act like we have a quarter inch seam allowance here. Okay. And that we've already stitched that. And so when we do this for both handles, remember we found the perfect placement. So if we take the same seam allowance, mm -hmm. and then we flip our handle up and take another seam allowance, we've concealed that raw edge. We took the same amount off of each handle, and our handles will end up being the same height and the same placement on the bag. So let's take a look at what that looks like once that's sewn into place. Okay. Now remember, we could do whatever we want it for fabrics. We have an outside back pocket. Our handle is sewn into place, just as we described. Let's take a look at this center uh, piece so that they can actually see where you folded it over again. I think that is a really neat trick, Joan. And if you like, since it's stitched about a quarter of an inch away, you can actually feed something through there like yarn or a strip of batting or even some cording mm -hmm. to fill that in and give it a little more comfort or stability. Good idea. So we've got two halves of the bag. We have our pen and pencil holders. We have our cell phone holder. Remember, our edge is still free because we haven't finished the bag. <laughs> On the other side, we left a pocket off of this one, but you can see where all of our stitching is. Mm -hmm. And now let's look at the other half of the bag. Now remember, we mixed it up with fabrics. <laughs> so here we have the other half, and all of our fabrics work together. Mm -hmm. We've got our handle in place, our front pocket, and our lining is different too. So it, it, you don't have to have enough of the same fabric no. to make your bag. That's right, Just. and we chose fabrics that when you unzip the bag and look inside, you 
you've got this bright, crisp, vibrant lining smiling back at you. So here, next in our project, just as you would pick fabrics that coordinate, the zipper for this project is also a design detail and the color of that zipper and any embellishments you add are going to add to the overall project. So let's take a look at just how we pick a zipper for a project like this. Okay. So we're going to audition zippers. <laughs> <clears throat> so here we have the bag. Our long edges are going to be the top. We know where the sides are. So let's place a couple of zippers in there and see what looks good. Just simply pull a zipper out of the package. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks nice. If you pre-planned these. <laughs> I did. I did. We just pull zippers in the same colors as our fabrics. Okay. And if you like, you can always stitch with a contrast like black just for that deep, intense effect. And if you want, go ahead and snuggle it underneath to see how it's going to look. That doesn't quite look good, like, like what we want. We've got a little yellow in our project. That seems a little too intense. And here we have this nice, soft yellow. Oh, I like that better. I do, too. And if we add that to the top of our bag, remember, we've got a zipper pull on there just waiting for some attention. <laughs> so what I do is I go to my basket of ribbons, and I start to find ribbons that might look nice with our project. Maybe pull in some of the red, maybe so some of the yellow. So now we need a stash of ribbons as well as a stash of zippers <laughs> and fabric. <laughs> we need a stash of anything you right. can have a stash yep. of. Okay. Now once we put the ribbon through the hole, we're going to tie it in a knot. And then last but not least, look for a couple of buttons. Oh, no, I like those. Now these are fabulous. You can just stitch these right onto the ribbon. And we're already getting a sense, a sense of what our finished bag is going to look like. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. And finally, you know, there are different kinds of zippers. You can do the standard all-purpose zipper, or now they offer a brand new purse zipper designed. I haven't seen that before. I really think that's, that's really going to help. And this is designed for the top of bags, so right. it's very prominent. And you want to unzip from, from the center. And one thing to keep in mind, we're going to actually stitch over the zipper. So we want to stay away from the big, chunky, athletic, or sport zippers. We okay. do really want something with a fine teeth, with fine teeth that can be sewn through. Okay. That's the one thing to keep in mind. So let's take a look at what it is to put a zipper in this little cutie and move over to the sewing machine and actually stitch it in place. Okay, let's do that. What's the first thing we're going to sew now? We are ready to install the zipper on this. Okay. Now remember, we are going to work on the top edge of the bag, and we're going to sew through the zipper. So we can work with a zipper that's longer than our edge, and then that way we don't have to worry about the knot at the bottom or the zipper pull at the top. Okay, so just as long as it's longer. So Yeah, that's right. So we're going to move it a little off the edge there, and we're going to start sewing here. So we've got our zipper face down. You can see our zipper pull. Mm -hmm. And let's just slide this under the machine. Now what we've done is we've installed a zipper foot, which has a nice ridge on it that's going to let us sew right next to the bulkiest part of our zipper. That'll make a nice guide. Now notice I didn't pin this. We're just going to manage it as we go. Good. You can pin it if you like, but yeah. like most things you sew, you're going to end up taking the pins out as you get there. Right. It's well, easier just... not to pin. <laughs> that <laughs> takes time. <laughs> Now here, we're going to start off the edge. Going to make sure our project gets under the foot. We've got a little buckle there. There we go. Straighten everything up. We've got it anchored. We are ready to go. So we're just watching the bulkiest part of the zipper as it feeds along the edge of the zipper foot. And then over here, as you can see, I'm shifting the zipper to keep it close to the edge of the cover. And we're going to do this for each half of the cover, stitching a little bit at a time, because this is the top of the bag. We want it to look nice. You know, that's what you're going to see. Now remember, by doing construction this way, where we make one half of the bag at a time, if there's ever a problem, or you run out of fabric, or you change your mind on what fabric you're using, we made each piece of the bag separately, and then assembled them all at once. <laughs> So if something doesn't work out, just make a different one and put it in its place. Okay. So here we go. We're almost finished with the zipper. Remember, we've got that extra long zipper. 
This project uses an 18 inch, but I had a 22 inch in the right color that I wanted. So you used the 22. That's right. So we'll just go ahead and cut our thread and slide that out. Now see how nice and even that is using our sure zipper is. foot? Now because we fuse these fabrics, it has the body and life of canvas. It's going to be a little stiff to press. And what we need to do is press it so that the seam allowance goes away from the zipper okay. and lays flat and then we're going to come back and stitch it again. Okay. So this is a wonderful opportunity to press with steam. So what we're going to do is press it this way. So if you would help me, we're going to take... Which way? We're going to press it toward the bag. Toward the bag, okay. Mm -hmm. I can we want to make sure that when we use this bag and zip and unzip, we don't want that seam allowance getting caught right. in the zipper. That's always a problem, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And in fact, remember, we fused these two fabrics to make something that felt like canvas. Mm -hmm. If you want it, you could use uh, regular cotton with batting and quilt your cover. Or oh, you could that's use, a good idea. Or you could use anything else that <clears throat> works as one piece of fabric, like uh, vinyl coated fabrics or upholstery fabric or anything along those lines. Just that looks like it's done. <laughs> that looks like it's pressing very nicely. It is. Now, an extra step that you could do is to zigzag around all the edges of the cover, because remember, if we fused it, they're self-finishing. But over the life of the bag, you might find that a little zigzag around the edges would be nice. Let's take a quick look and see. See if I did it right. See how we did. <laughs> Why don't we press it from okay. this side? and make sure that that lays no, flat. Most of it's good. We did pretty well. <laughs> Don't be afraid to press your, <clears throat> your zipper. <clears throat> Pardon me, if it's like this, a polyester all-purpose zipper, think about the clothing you have with zippers in them. You can press that clothing so you can press this zipper. And when you take it out of its package, fresh from the store, the zipper is gonna be folded in half, maybe mm -hmm. even in thirds, depending on its length. Okay, now this is a fantastic trick. Okay, we can see that we've got our seam allowance going the correct way because we can see the seam allowance from the zipper right. extending that way. We just need to stitch along close to the fold to make sure that we keep that seam allowance going that way. So we are going to use our same settings on the machine and we're going to act like the bulk of this fold is the zipper. Oh, and just ride right along there with mm -hmm. the zipper foot. That's a good idea. That's right. And since we can change the position of our needle, we're gonna go ahead and move it over one. So everything's in the same spot it was before and just by acting like our fabric is the zipper and by moving our needle position once, we can go ahead with the same settings on our machine, move right into the next step oh, of our project. Great. What a straight stitching line that gives you. It's, again, it's just knowing what guides to use, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. So who would have thought that a bulky piece of fabric would act <laughs> like a zipper? But our machine foot doesn't need to know that it's not a zipper. <laughs> mm -mm. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. And look how nice and straight oh, and clean yeah. that is. Mm -hmm. Looks good. And even our thread in this project adds to it because we've, we've picked a dark burgundy which pulls out the deep reds in this project. Mm -hmm. And that acts as one of the design details. Now we get to the fun part where we have to sew the other half on. So if you will give me the other half of the bag. Now remember, we have a top edge and a bottom edge. The top edge is near the handle. Okay. Now we need to line this up and we want the zipper on top. So we're gonna go ahead and place those. Move our handles out of the way. And if you look over here, we're gonna shimmy this until the edges of our bag meet. Oh, right here, okay. And guess what, we know we have the perfect placement for our zipper. <laughs> How easy could that be? And then over here, we're gonna match our zipper edge to the edge of our fabric, get it somewhat in place, bring it over to your zipper, put your presser foot down. Now remember, we moved our needle position right, over. Right, it back, okay. Let's move it back. We're gonna do the same thing we just did, and we're gonna attach the other half of the bag. And before you know it, we are gonna be done with this. So we got a little bit of a buckle under there. We're gonna help it through. Remember, we're not pinning. You can pin if you like, but really, where are those pins gonna go? We've got a zipper with teeth right there. And this fabric's gonna act just a little different than the canvas that we made. 
So if you let them both do their thing as you sew, you're going to end up with a nice, smooth, flat zipper. All right, and when we're done with our Project K, I like to give my bags a little more support by creating a sleeve and then sliding something in to help it stand straight up. That's a great idea, because I know all your bags are great and they stand up. And I want to thank you for sharing all your tips with us. It's been great. Thank you, Kay. And be sure and join me on my next show when I'll bring you some more quilting ideas. For information on today's main demonstration, Call 1-800-248-K. That's 1-800-248-5293. Or write to us at K's Quilting Friends, Post Office Box 456, West Branch, Michigan, 48661. Please remember to specify the program number. Kay's Quilting Friends is brought to you in part by Genomi America, Clover Needlecraft, Otlight Technology. Our thanks for joining us for this edition of Kay's Quilting Friends. We hope the ideas shared with you in this program will make your quilting more enjoyable. Please join us again on the next Kay's Quilting Friends.